Do you do more in call or do you do more out call? 99% of my clients come to me and that's predominantly because 99% of them have wives. How long have you been a sex worker for now? I mean, I'm gonna be 60. I start, I turned my first trick when I was 20. I was like literally in and out in like 15 minutes. I had $200 in my hand and I'll never ever forget that moment walking out of the hotel room. Trust me when I tell you, you want the sling special. I always said, is cocksucker a pronoun? Cause then I'd go by that. Have you been? Yes, since last March, and you were like, I'll be in New York soon. And I'm like, hurry! <laughs> and me too, thank you. Okay, perfect, first take. When I was deciding what interviews to do this time around, I just, I started watching a YouTube channel and I just started watching like your Instagram. When it comes to creating content, I prefer inches over footage. You have so much personality and so much joy in your in your eyes and in the way you speak. And I just felt like you'd be someone perfect for my channel. So I'm just, I feel so honored to be here. Mm, but the feeling is mutual. So you grew up in the Bronx, you said? Born and raised in an area called Parkchester up in the Bronx. So now you live in a place called Sunnyside. Correct. And this seems like a very safe area. I moved here in 1996 and it was like, it's become very like almost kind of gay. We even have like a cute little gay bar now a few blocks away. My apartment, a one bedroom apartment rent stabilized. We're not going to say how much I pay because people would be like, I hate her. <laughs> <laughs> so that's another question I was gonna ask you is you have Fiona St. James, James is your real name, but you go by he, him, and that's your- Correct. Right. I always said, is cocksucker a pronoun? Cause then I'd go by that, but <laughs> I don't think- <laughs> I'm already in love with you, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I mean, I identify as a gay male, but ultimately I am a cis man who just happens to be gay. When all of this with the pronouns came out, there was a part of me that thought, by virtue of that happening, it's almost like they're taking away from what we did to get to that point. But at, then at the same time as time progressed, I totally get it. So that whole topic of conversation, I almost would rather not. I respect your opinion. And that was another reason why I wanted you on the show, not to talk about pronouns, but just, I love talking to people that have, you know, lived another generation than me or just times longer than I have. And so to hear your perspective is it's very important for all of us. Yeah, thank you. Do you live here by yourself? Yes. So, wow. living room. And I love this it. Is when I do the erotic massage, this is where it happens. And then, of course, my bedroom. Oh my gosh. Which, you know, <gasps> how many bottoms do you know actually own a sling? It makes me quite popular. I believe and of it. Of course, I got the deluxe one, which has the mirror. Oh my gosh. <laughs> how cool. And then I have mirrors everywhere. So, I'm always like, look up, daddy. And then I'm like, look to the right. And then the mirror there, and then when we're on the bed, of course, I got other mirrors there. I charge a certain price, but then I'm like, you know, I have a sling special. Smart. And you up the price. And this is, does it work a lot? Oh, yeah. Love it. Because a lot of times either they've done it once or they've not done it. And I'm like, trust me when I tell you, you want the sling special. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> How long have you been a sex worker for now? 40,000 years, no, going on 40 years. I mean, I'm gonna be 60, I start, I turned my first trick when I was 20. I really like never had any notion or like desire to do it, but I'm of the school of thought, everyone should do everything one time. Mm. So growing up, because Hollywood always glamorized prostitution and a beautiful woman dressed in like a, a mink coat coming out of a limo, and I'd be like, I wanna be her. <laughs> <laughs> so then at the age of 20, I thought, I want to turn a trick. I went to the back of it, and there was an ad for an escort agency. So I was like, f*** it, I want to do this. So I answered the ad. He booked me on the on the call. I'll never, ever forget Danny at the Marriott Marquis. 
have this thing with numbers. Wow. <laughs> I was like literally in and out in like 15 minutes. I had $200 in my hand and I'll never ever forget that moment walking out of the hotel room and walking down the hallway to the elevator and, and thinking, oh my God, this was the easiest thing and it was so wonderful. And I was like, easy, sleazy, cover girl. Now I can say I've done that. And I never had any intention of doing it again. Mm -hmm. Fast forward two years later, at the age of 22, you know, when you graduate college, there's always that question. Now what are you going to do with your life? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> so I was still living at home and I knew I had to get out of my parents' house. So I thought back of the village voice answered a different ad, went on the interview. They booked me on the spot, had my first client that night. And who was it? Danny, from, still at the Marriott Marquis, still nondescript, still easy, $200 later. So now the agency that I worked for at that point, he was technically like a massage parlor. I would be there Tuesday through Saturday, and I'd see about 15 clients. I remember when I was living on the Upper West Side from 91 to 96, I'd get clients ringing me, calling me at like 2 in the morning, and I lived in a doorman building. There were days that I was seeing so many clients that my uh, the doorman would ring my intercom come and I would just say next <laughs> really <laughs> they knew what I was doing and it wasn't frowned upon b back then no and you know what that building that I lived in there I wasn't the only up in there mm -hmm. it was like that it, we were a kind of funky eclectic popular artsy building did you make more money back then than you make now as a sex worker I definitely had more volume back then let's keep it real 12 13 15 men every Tuesday Saturday I couldn't do that now I wouldn't want to do that now even at 22 that's kind of rough on your body yeah nowadays it's like if someone has not contacted me by say 8 p.m it's not gonna happen have you had intuitions about clients where you felt like something was wrong before they came and just felt like i don't want this client no i've never had anything where i felt my life was in danger i'm surprised and happy but happily surprised to hear that you've never had any experiences where you felt in danger nope 40 years and i've never like no one has ever tried stiffing me no one has ever tried not paying I don't even ask for the money up front. The thought of anything bad ever happening or anyone trying to stiff me or my life being in danger is a non-thought for me. I don't allow that kind of energy in my life, so because I believe that that won't ever happen, it never has, and it never will. And look, like when people ask me, like, don't you get scared? And I'm like, I don't get scared if I meet a bitch on br a grinder that comes right. over. How's that any different than hooking up? I have always been so open and honest with it because I, I think as human beings, we tend to go for like the stereotypical, mm -hmm. like bad side of everything. Mm -hmm. Like if you're a hope, that means like you were, or you came from a broken home or like you were kicked out or didn't have a loving family. Whereas me, I was like, A, I love sex, B, I love money. And see, I love the camera, which is why now I also do like a little porn. <laughs> oh, really? So I'm like, let's put it all together. Do you do more in call or do you do more out call? 99% of my clients come to me and that's predominantly because 99% of them have wives. So <laughs> I don't think that wife would want me to show up. Is that real? A lot of them are married? Yeah. Maybe not 99, but honestly, like 95. Do they tell you that too, or you just see the ring? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, they tell me. I think in the heterosexual world, for whatever reason, like you get married and then like, you know, suddenly your sex life. A lot of my clients, like they tell me, oh, my wife doesn't touch me. Or like sometimes, you know, they can be a little bitchy to the husband. And, and I'm sure that the husband is no saint either. I mean, so women, I get it. I'd be a bitch to my man too if he treated me the way half the way they treat them. But the only thing I say to that is, keep not f***ing so you could come to me. <laughs> but wait, wouldn't they just go to an another woman? I think like most people are straight until they're not. I think everyone has a little bit of bisexuality in them. And I, and I think because society says that you're supposed to be straight. And remember, like the demographic that I get, I always get men that are around my age. Now, of course, I tell them that I'm 40. And they're always like, oh, my God, you look amazing for 40. And then in my mind, I think to myself, that's because I'm going on 60. 
<laughs> you really do look amazing. Thank you. Well, it's genetics. My parents are 92 and 85, and they look incredible for their age. Also, I think it comes with, from within, too. You're, you seem like a very happy person. Yes. And and not only that, but I, my whole life, I've always had like this Peter Pan complex. I admit it, and I embrace that part of me. So your parents are still alive. They've been married 65 years. They are 92 and 85. Wow. Beautiful. Yeah, they're great together. How are they doing? Father's not doing so great. He had a stroke about four years ago. I mean, he's his mind is still there, but like, you know, he can't walk too much. So like wheelchair, a little bit of a walker. It, it's interesting. It's sad to see like your parents grow older because, you know, he was always like so strong and this, you know, this pillar of strength. It's a lot of work because I'm technically their caregiver. So any and everything pertaining to both of them filters through me. Every day of my life, there's like one or two hours that I'm on the phone dealing with things or like balancing the checkbook, paying the bills. As I get older, it's it's so interesting, you know, seeing my parents get older too. And, and thankfully, they're super still active and I still have many years with them, hopefully. But... It's like you're saying, it's just an adjustment of learning like, oh, now I'm I'm the stronger one. I'm the one that's going to take care of them, you know, the, but they're blessed to have you, especially still in New York. You become the parent. And the, I mean, I have three siblings and look, I ain't trying to read them, but <laughs> I do everything. I've always said it's sort of understood if you have a group of kids, if one of them is gay, especially if they're the youngest one, everything falls on them. It's almost like if you're straight, you have a get out of jail free card. Do you think it also has to do with the fact that a lot of people in the queer community or gay people are single? That's a huge part of it because it's almost like because I am single and because I don't have kids, then it's like, you know, my siblings each have their own family unit. My family unit still has and always will be my parents. You know, it's so interesting. I feel like that's so common in the gay community is that we a lot of times don't find a person to be with forever. Did you want that growing up like a husband? I still do. Dating and doing what I do is not easy. On top of that is like the fact that I've done drag for like 36 years, which a lot of guys can't deal with that because there's so much toxic masculinity. If one more motherfucker talks about, oh, I'm straight acting, well, first of all, you shouldn't act. You should be who you are. Even within our own community, I kind of feel like there's so much discrimination, like these ultra uber top top macho guys that will like look down on someone who may not be the butchest thing on the planet because i know i'm not but guess what bitch, i'll f you up in a minute i feel the same way like i felt for so many years i was trying to be someone i wasn't to be looked at in a certain way in our community and the minute i like released that and was just like this is who i am i have parts of me that are feminine i have parts of me that are masculine i don't care right. like you do find your power but it is it it, it's just interesting because a lot of guys are only into mask acting guys. Right. And and then, so for me, like, I've always said I will always be perpetually single. Have you had any serious relationship that you thought this is going to be the one? A couple, but they weren't very long-lasting. Do you still feel hope in that? I, yeah, you know what? Like, it, in recent years, I've had moments where I've met guys that I've really liked. I'm, I don't want to say too much, but there's, like, you know, there's kind of someone that I'm digging. Currently, we were just together. What day is today? We were together less than 48 hours ago. Yeah. Like today I'm a little bit like, oh, I could still feel him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you look smitten. Yeah, it's kind of, there's something kind of wonderful about him. It's interesting, too, because I talk freely about what I do. Like, he even knows that we're doing this, and I'm like, you know, the word worker comes out of my mouth easily and with no shame, with no being concerned what anyone's going to think about me or judge me because I don't really give a because. You ain't paying my bills. Mm -hmm. If you start paying my bills, then you have the right to say anything. Do your parents know about your work? They know. I don't necessarily talk about it. Free. I do with my mother, not my father. But like my mother and I would be on the phone. And I'm like, Mom, I got to run. I have a client coming in 10 minutes. What does she say when you say that? Be careful. Save your money. <laughs> <laughs> Good advice. Yeah, like my mother's so cool. She gave me my first strapless bra when I first started doing drag. Are you closer with your mom than you are with your dad? Absolutely. I love my father because he's my father but he has that old school Latin machismo going on. So like I never really liked him growing up. And you know how it is like in, in that culture, it's the father who like lays down the law and then it's the mother who's the more nurturing and loving. But there's not anything I wouldn't do for him. Do you see longevity in your work and your sex work? Or are you going to keep riding the rave? Or what are you feeling? <sighs> the, I have this fantasy where I want to, when I turn 60, I, I could say I've been a 
worker for 40 years, I want to stop. There's a part of me that kind of feels like if you're at the top of any game that you're in, leave when you're at the top. But if I'm still looking like this and if I'm single and if the situation is such that I'm not done with it, I will continue on. This has been so interesting. <laughs> I have loved meeting you so much. You are you are like a joy in this world and you have such a hunger for life and a lightness in your eyes. Like you said Peter Pan and I like totally see that in a good way. You have a youthfulness about you that I really, really love, and and I and I hope that I can carry some of that into my life. You oh, know? you do already. I mean, you have the the same sprinkle in your eyes. The secret is just, like, I don't think I'm ever gonna get old. Like, I always see myself as being in my twenties, and I have. I don't know why, but I've just always naturally felt that, and that's not even anything that's put upon. Like, I don't think I'm ever gonna get old, which I'm sure I will. No, I don't think so. I'm right. I agree with you. He's a smart cookie. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh my god, I love you. This I love you too. It was amazing. You had a good time? Yes. Okay, good. Okay, good. Thank you for today. It was so fun. Oh my god, it was incredible. You are wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I hope I'm not being too presumptuous, but I did autograph a copy of my book <gasps> for you. Did you really? Yes. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. Oh my gosh. She made me a beautiful friend of mine on the West Virginia YouTube channel. You're too Oh, thank you so much. Oh thank my you. God. It was really quite wonderful being with you, and I am honored and privileged that you had me on your show, and I look forward to seeing the finished product. Me too. Thank you so much.